Welcome back. Uh, I have an answer to the question we had last uh, session, which is who is the author of Twitchbot by Danny Barker? It's Danny Barker is the owner or author of this. Um, so in testing this today, I noticed that if you put in a two letter anagram, it sure takes a second to come up with um, <laughs> this. Uh, so, yeah, I get that for a fully generalized anagram, um, well, we could take a look at the code. Um, so, this is broken up into a few modules. Initially, I was a bit intimidated by the .vs and the VS code directories, but I don't need to worry about that. Uh, what I need to concern myself with is, um, where'd it go? Here's Twitchbot, which makes invocations or calls to dictionary.py. Dictionary.py has anagram. Um, let me think about this for a second. result equals anagram word lexicon wait is this coming up with all the matches and then pruning it okay yes seemingly so wait no what does anything invoke anagram underscore one no that's just a standalone all right uh what Okay, we'll search for anagram underscore one here. Ah, here we go. So it's anagram underscore one, which gets invoked when we call anagram. Um, oh, I see, and this invokes the other anagram function and then prints out a listing. Um, and so the question here is, could this anagram um, well, I wonder, do I have a way that I can invoke these? Uh, let me think. I'm sorry. Uh, before I go any further, I should take one obvious step here and fork the repository if I've not already, and I have. I'm already one commit behind. Oh, delete pi installer. All right, fine. I can upgrade my copy of this repo. Uh, oh, goodness. Um, yes, yeah, so this is going to take a second for me to catch up on. Let's just share my total perspective, which includes my terminal. Uh, did I define the remote repo? The remote v remote add my, my full name there. And let's say here we go. Remote set URL push. Uh, to the SSH version of this same repo. And hopefully this takes. All right, so I think we're in sync with master, and we are. Let's add the actions pipeline for a Python application. So set up this workflow, start commit, go, and we'll see if this compiles or Python, you don't really compile, you interpret it, but you can still run tests against it, lint it, so forth. Uh, so let's see how this is going. How far do we get before this fails? Nine seconds? Or, oh wait, negative seven seconds, okay. I guess we're warming up to do something. That's cool, I guess. Three seconds, four seconds, 16, all right, whatever. 
Um, test with PyTest is the first step that failed. This is encouraging. So what this means, uh, all right, get pull. pull the master branch. So um, the first step which failed in this continuation continuous integration pipeline was the running of PyTest. And running a PyTest uh, executes the command bash whatever run the PyTest command. Uh, like this. All right, no tests run. Um, so I need to define a test. How do you define tests in Python again? Goodness, um, I just want the most trivial test possible so I can get a test and submit. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, let's focus on getting this working. Um, our Python files are config.py, dictionary.py, twitchbot.py. Um, is it possible to test config.py? JSON decoder, class config, save custom command. Okay, yeah, that looks tricky to test because it interacts with the file system. Uh, is it possible or easy to test dictionary.py? If I remember correctly, yeah, this, uh, simply the loading of this file, well, uh, that's interesting. Uh, simply loading this file will call the function open files, which does not, well, it's not going to function correctly in a test harness the way it's written. Uh, for this to function correctly, I would need to move open files into the other file. Uh, this is also saying if... Yeah, I... Hmm. One thing at a time, though. Um, so we're going to move that into twitchbot.py somehow. So, uh, dictionary. So, up here where we're importing dictionary, I'm going to say open files is the first thing we do. That doesn't seem right. No. There we go. Um, that doesn't even return a value, but it causes a side effect, which is necessary for the dictionary to operate. Uh, at least if you have a populated dictionary, which we might not require. We might be able to get away without requiring the dictionary for just to define a test. Um, but yeah, I forget. How do you create a uh, by test? Getting started, table of contents. I just want a simple, trivial example to refresh my memory on this stuff. Um, I mean, I could go to the main site. Oh, okay. Well, the site actually produced a good example. Um, set BG equals Stark. I forget how you persistently set background equal to dark, to dark. Um, but yeah, if I run PyTest now, um, yep, there we go. This did exactly what we thought. Um, that, uh, that said, we will need to get a test that actually tests something that's in the source code for it to count. Uh, Vim RC BG dark. How do we do this persistently? Um, oh, do we just... What if I don't have a Vim RC file? Do I have one? 
I don't. Uh, do, do, do. All right. I guess we're going to create one. And now if I look at a file, uh, I'm not sure. Let me take a look at, what was it? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that is persistent. Nice. Uh, so. Over here, related word.lexicon, or word comma lexicon. Oh. So these are not members of a class. These are just free functions. I could pass in any lexicon I wanted. That's cool. That makes it super easy to test. Um, so I just need to mock the data structure correctly. Uh, well, the easiest thing to test would be open files, ironically. Because um, either you're going to have the files or you're not. Yuck. Um, but okay. We still want to assert some condition within the test, and I don't feel I could do that. Hmm. Yeah, what would be something more valuable for me to test? Anagrams complicated, something trivial. Random word in lexicon. There we go. Um, test answer. So we're going to assert random word of a lexicon. I don't even know what the data, data structure looks like, but let's assume that's um, test random word. Oh, right. And it's this is a dictionary, so lexicon is something like this. Uh, I assume it's going to look like AA, AA. And yeah, add star.py, py test failed. Uh, okay. Invalid syntax. Well, I don't know how to write a dictionary. I'm expecting to know these things. Um, let's see. See us. Oh, so we have an array. We read each line of the file. CSW array element is equal to line elements one onward um no, okay i thought i did it right oh is this just spaces instead of a tab fine uh There's that work. It's a lot of text to read. Let's just put that on the top of the screen. Unmatched parenthesis. I knew that. Just testing whatever this tool is. Oh, right. I suppose I need to import dictionary for this to work, don't I? Random word is not defined. Are we sure? Uh, it looks like it's defined to me. Um...
dictionary down? Oh, right. <laughs> um, import random word from dictionary. Uh, add, etc. Wait, are you serious? It's Python 3.8. Uh, do we have to do PyTest 3? Um, no. Am I just imagining that? Um, the import system. I want to know if I've missed something. Oh, really? No. Python import function from file. Do I have to import the entire other file for this to work? Or is it from file import function? No. Okay, I had it backwards. Oops. Um, um, all right, we can fix this. There we go. Unhashable type dict. Well, that's progress. Um, Random.choice, list of word list of lexicon. Oh, my mistake. Um, shows my understanding of this file, right? So, how do we fix this? We're constantly indexing into lexicon to obtain the correct word list. Um, I'm not in a tremendous hurry to rewrite stuff. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's strange. In Java, it's easy to write code, and here you have to be more thoughtful about um, what you're passing in. Um, all right, well, whatever. Um, return MSG. Well, I guess, yeah, the object isn't to prove that everything works. Uh, so, this is not the world's most useful test ever, but cannot choose from an empty sequence. Okay, that's a valid test, though. I contend it just indicates the code's failing in this at this point. Um, so rather than random dot choice, um, we need a condition here for if word list of lexicon is empty, then do something. Um, I don't want to have to load the entire file to do my simple test. <sighs> uh, 
So this is all spaces. All right. If um, length, wait, if empty word list of lexicon. I don't know. How do you say if a dictionary not empty in Python? How do you check if the dictionary is empty? Um, really? <laughs> empty dictionaries evaluate to false. Okay. Um, there's our answer. Truthiness. Uh, all right. There we go. And we have a forward declaration of MSG, so we're good. It's inelegant, but functional. Uh, so let's check. Do we pass the test? We do. Um, add unit test. Uh, test random word. Uh, if dictionary. Uh, wait. No. It's not even so much we're adding the test. It's that... Uh, do not uh, tolerate empty dictionary uh, and random word. Um, Oh, really? Okay, we can do this. Fine. Uh, this is all public anyway. Um, get push master branch up to the GitHub. And verify that up in GitHub, um, our test passes now. So we've added a test, and we can watch the steps of the CI pipeline. So we're some 20 minutes into this. Uh, wait, really? I failed the Flake 8 linter. Uh, undefined name, open files. Oh, <laughs> of course we failed the Flake 8 linter. All right, that makes sense. Uh, nice catch. Uh, what? Oh, okay, that's interesting. Cannot run minimalist vim, no such file or directory. Um, all right, am I allowed to just specify the same commit message? Oh, good. All right. Should suffice. Right, let's try this again. Can I pass the linter this time, perhaps? Probably should just run Flake 8 on my machine instead of making GitHub run it, but 
There's something satisfying about watching the dial spin a little bit. Something else satisfying about it working on a machine that's not my machine. All right, very good. Uh, test passes. So we're now going to issue... Whoops. We're going to do one last thing while we're here. Let's create another branch. Uh, that's not how we create a branch. The easy way is get uh, actions. Boom. All right. Um, and then we go over here and suggest to this maintainer a new pull request across forks from our repository from our new branch uh, uh, and CI pipeline um, brief for open source projects uh, github um, lints and tests um, code on each commit and let me go over here I can never remember what this URL is but paste that in create the pull request and there we go now that wasn't the focus for today but that's just some preliminary setup work that needs to be done so now that we have a baseline test um, uh, we can start to make code changes for the thing I have not yet demonstrated. Um, well, you can see it on the screen here, but watch. When I submit define AA, we get a response instantaneously. When I say anagram AA, there's a response. So... Um, Difference uh, here, yeah, you can see that, good. Um, difference here is that anagram <laughs> perhaps could be written in a more efficient manner. So, let's see. This is actually going to be difficult to test without loading the lexicon. But the lexicon itself is not freely available so I don't know how we ever managed to test this but um, hmm. <sighs> short of actually doing it on my cloud instance well no we could deploy this code we could run it um, there will be two copies of the bot running at the same time in the channel we should observe that one will be faster than the other. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of what we can do. Oh, I'm sorry. Anagram one prints the results of this anagram operation. This operation, um, really, if there are no blanks, you don't need to use a regular expression at all. It's tremendously wasteful to, well, maybe it's not, but, um, I mean, we're iterating the word list already, right? Um, let me think about this. For x in word list, if regular expression search, word list lexicon x4. Oh, is that the alphagram, is it? Point 0.4. So our data structure already contains the alphagram. So say I had, I don't know, the first three lines of the word list. Um, I see, so this already contains the alphagram. <sighs> uh, 
Um, well, the immediate thought, uh, instead of writing some, yeah, okay. Oh, I see. We're checking if the alphagram matches. Um, fair enough, but... Let's see. I mean, this is going to be the most commonly used function that I'm aware of. Other than define. Define's instantaneous, but... Alphagram's pretty common, and it often will accept a blank, but in the case we're not dealing with a blank, why would we not want an ancillary data structure just for alphagrams? Well, it consumes memory to have this ancillary structure, so you don't... Yeah, so this is what we're trying to avoid. Um, hmm... So, the next thing one could consider, no, well yeah, you could make the alphagram the key of the primary data structure. Um, that way you wouldn't need to iterate through the entire word list. My thought was that we could split the word list by length of word. And for longer words, people might be more willing to tolerate a delay on the lookup. Um, but no, actually, just adding this secondary structure is probably the smarter way to go. Um, let's see. Prep word list dictionary.py. How often do we access various elements of the word list? Um, so if the length of whatever is six, etc. So we care a lot about if the length of W is six and it's columns only, we're going to append uh, the columns only symbol on the end. But in other cases, most of the time we're just accessing the key uh, lexicon my result zero. So like here, zero would be the first, the leftmost element, which is the word. Um, hang on. Uh, what if I say grep this and grep dash v6? Okay. And grep v4. So we're looking at matches that do not include the 6, that do not include the word 4. Uh, that we're just seeing what positional... Most, much of the time we're interested in word at index 0, or we're interested in the entire result. Um, hmm. Okay, wait, wait a second. I don't know how fast the regular expression operation is versus the length equals word length operation. Possibly just reversing the order of those two operations could speed everything up. So down here, if length of x is equal to word underscore length, why would that not be... oh. Uh, okay, that would not be the first thing that we search, because... Well, it doesn't matter which one we search first, because these both have to evaluate to true. Um, 
in order to reach the next line of code. Uh, so should be able to invert the order here. And I uh, Um, oh, okay, yeah, what I could do to test this is write a test that I'm not able to check in. Um, should have run this test first. Uh, but yeah, test anagram. All right, cert anagram. AA is equal to blank. Now, that won't do anything unless I also... I mean, we can high test it, sure. Um, oh, right. Can I import star? Does that work in Python? Okay, yeah, missing positional argument. Lexicon. Um, okay, anagram, word, comma, lexicon. All right, very well. So it's not lying. Um, in case it's not obvious, I don't tell, uh, I don't regularly do stuff in Python. Um, all right. All oh, right, of course, it's going to return a list. But that's not what we're trying to find out. What we're trying to find out is if we've loaded the dictionary. Um, no, we've done this dictionary open files step. How fast do we get through um, this anagram step? Dictionary is not defined. You are correct. <laughs> All right. Um, what? Left contains one more item. Um, oh, yeah, it makes sense that random word would fail, but, uh, what I was interested in is, how fast is it? Um, two seconds, 2.87 seconds. All right, now, what if, um, again, I said I'm not even going to commit this, so I don't need that. Um, all right, so, whoops, what? Truly? Oh, my mistake. Um, uh, this parenthesis belongs on that side of the quality operator. All right, so that took 2.8 seconds to run. Um, so there's our change to dictionary.py is reverting or inverting the order of this line of code. Um, so let's go back and see, can I slow this down by reversing the condition? Um, so 
So we have 2.8 seconds per test right now as it stands. And if I put this in the other sequence, 3.06 seconds. So simply by reversing the order of operations there, we're saving a fraction of a second. Um, now, I don't know how much of, well, okay. Um, I say I don't know how much of this uh, is attributed to loading the dictionary. Let's just load the dictionary. 2.59 seconds. 2.87 seconds. So yeah, basically, I think we're going to find that most of the time of this test is simply just loading the dictionary um, like that. Um, so, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I know what else we could do. If I'm being not dumb. Um, yeah. Wait. For x in range 1 to 100, 1 to 10, do the following. Uh, that way we can... Eh, 10 seems low. Is this too much? Is Are those too many iterations? 1,000 iterations of doing anagram. Okay. 1,000 might be too many. Um, let's only do it 100 times. And see if we can get the running time for just anagramming words that we've already loaded from disk into memory executing 100 anagram commands. All right. Well, it's still going. Still going. Yep. Oh my goodness. Really? Should I have tested this on a scale of 1 to 10 instead of 1 to 100? I didn't think 100 would take so long. Uh, 42 seconds. Well, that's the magic number. Alright, so now we're going to go back to... Uh, go back here. Try it the other way around, where we check the length before we run the regular expression tester. All right, 10 times faster. A 1,000% speed up, or 900% speed up. Just have to invert the condition. Easy. So, yeah, here's the magic we had to do. Check the word length before running the regular expression. Who to thunk? I to thunk. Uh, Status. Um, accelerate. Um, oh, wait, no. We just are going to say fix uh, the issue that we created over here. Number five. That's it. Boom. Hit push. And since, unfortunately, we've created another branch, um, check out GitHub Actions. Uh, git merge master, git push, there we go. And Send that up and 
I mean, of course, the linter, it needs to pass the linter, but surely this passes linting, right? Um, so we need to go back to our fork. Check. Yeah, there it is. Fix number five. Checked in. Um, so not only have we added some tests, um, we're three commits ahead of master. All right. Now, I was mentioning that I can't exactly, well, yeah, I can't commit that test as it stands. Um, so, because I know what the code change is, right, um, what I'm trying to submit to the cloud, or submit to the upstream thing, we have a continuous integration pipeline and a test, and then we have a actual change to this. This is the only part I care about. Um, yeah, so let me just move that into my cloud. Um, all right, do I need, yeah, unfortunately I need a password to do that. Uh, I'm just going to log in the old fashioned way. One second. All right, and then switch user to Lee Words. Um, CD Twitchbot. Take a look at dictionary.py. Yeah, I commented out loading of non Collins dictionaries. So if you want anything other than Collins, use your own dictionary. Um, but go down here. Split this on the word and if it goes down here and goes over here. There we go. There's our speed up. And so now if I say anagram AA, boom. Instantaneous. That was nice. Um, I wonder how that fares for other things. Retina question mark. Yeah, it's still pretty fast. So yeah, I'm a genius. All hail me. Um, but yeah, it just shows uh, the power of testing your changes. Um, so I was all convinced, ooh, let me create this other data structure or come up with all these other fancy solutions. But no, just inverting the order of a condition results in a 900% speed up. Um, so that's cool. Uh, we'll see whether or not Danny accepts my patch. Um, Danny, Danny, unfortunately, I do not know. Uh, but yeah, kudos to them for having published uh, such a useful utility. Um, the only reason I comment out loading the other dictionaries is because um, my machine couldn't. It's also serving other stuff, and I'm rather constrained on memory in a way that most machines are not. But uh, yeah, that's, that's awesome that this is published. So I didn't have to go make my own. All I had to do... Um, let's define a test and, um, yeah, we're all using this bot. It's open source. The power of open source software is that even without comments, sometimes if things are well structured, it can be easy to improve or fix things. So awesome. I will much appreciate that in the future because it was driving me mad really how slow this was. Um, and I understand it still could be much faster. Um, like I said, this was an instantaneous lookup. It really isn't. Um, so building a supplementary index or using a database would be even faster, but would require a lot more development effort 
and testing effort that I'm not willing to put in right now because I'm happy. So, anagram retina question mark. Yeah, it takes a quarter of a second. I can live with that. Waiting more than one second for a response to come back was a bit jarring. Quarter of a second is less jarring. Um, most people would attribute that, as, as I did, to just like some sort of latency question. Um, but no, until we actually defined the test and ran it 100 times and saw that 100 iterations took 42 seconds, and then we made the change and 100 iterations take 4 seconds, um, yeah, until we did that test, we didn't know. Uh, so if 100 iterations take 4 point something seconds, then each uh, is 0 0.45, 0 0.04? Really? Wait, so at this point, we're actually network bound. Really? So all this theoretical mumbo jumbo about we could further improve performance really doesn't matter because we're IO constrained at this point waiting on just unless this bot is on your local machine it's gonna underperform <laughs> um, because they're yeah the the latency accounts for the lion's share of the delay here you've got a call um, from Twitch to the bot and the call back from the bot up to Twitch to publish the result. So that round trip uh, accounts for most of the time it takes to execute this. Um, even for something as complicated as, uh, I don't know, Satan question mark, and there you go. It's very quick. Um, it's a lot of text to publish, but yeah, the only thing we could do to further improve performance at this point is like stick the bot immediately adjacent to a Twitch server or on a Twitch server. Um, I don't know what that would take. I'm sure there's documentation about how to do it, but I think people will be satisfied with this as it stands. But yeah, this um, is 100 iterations, 42 seconds originally, meant that this was taking not quite half a second to execute. So yeah, between that half second to execute this and the half a second or so of that round trip call time, yeah, that accounts for a lot here. Um, the only other possible improvement might be um, if there's a way to make this bot um, process input faster from the network. But it seems highly unlikely to me that twitchbot.py is using some kind of I.O. library that's underperforming. Um, but yeah, either the library or its communication with the network could theoretically be underperforming here. Unless there's something like in this processing. That'd be weird. Could be. Seems unlikely. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of code between all these functions. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Anything other than the anagram function at this point could be slow. So there's a lot of things that could be going on in a way that could be improved. Um, there's still going to be some overhead. But yeah, that's still impressive. Oh, I'm sorry. What I had run, written the test for um, was simply a two-letter word. So I verified that a two-letter word can anagram instantaneously. Um, is this really the case here? Anagram AA? Yeah, okay. So now, yeah. Fair enough, whatever. Um, 
Yeah, I think at this point, probably the bottleneck is... Well, I don't know. Yeah, we took 100 iterations from 40 down to 4 seconds, which means it's taking less than a tenth of a second to perform the anagram operation itself, so any other latency is accounted for elsewhere in the program, or on the network stack, or on the wide area network. There's nothing more to do here. Unless you were to like, write tests for all of this, but that seems like a lot of effort. Okay, well, nice. Yeah, so we'll see uh, what Danny thinks about this very kind of uh, Miss, Mrs. I don't know, Barker to have produced this. I'm assuming that's, uh, well, I should stop digging the hole at this point, but yeah, very nice of them to produce this, make it available under an MIT license so others can contribute. They're doing a reasonable effort to maintain this project, although we haven't heard from them a little bit. Um, yeah. Um, I don't recall if there's other things I wanted to look at at this time. Um, I did find out that uh, Wanderer 12 here is a different Wanderer than Wanderer 15. So the getting a hold of this Wanderer might be challenging. Um, We'll see if we can find a way to do it, but yeah, if not, they did thankfully put work in progress on this to explain to the world that this is something, I don't know, it could take a while to get for them to get through processing some of these pull requests. Um, I'm very hopeful at some point that having both solved the problem of players not getting enough time on their clocks and also having solved the problem of tournaments not getting scheduled in Japan, uh, Japanese time zones. Um, just people not being able to play in tournaments because they're poorly scheduled. Having solved both of these things, I'm hopeful that this can get resolved at some point, but we will see. Um, let's see, are there other things? Uh, Stockfish is ready to push some more changes. Um, oh, there is one issue on my own Stockfish fork that came up very recently, so do I still have that here? Yep. There's this particular position with lots of queens on the board that somehow takes a long time for Stockfish to analyze. It's in my issues list. It's a very unusual position. It's possible this might not be very easy to resolve, but I've put it in the issues list, so if I ever have a creative moment, I might be able to come up with... Well, let's assign myself to this, because honestly nobody else is going to take it. Um, it's not really a bug, but it'd be really nice if this performed well. Um, unfortunately, it just does not right now, so... Yeah, somebody had submitted an analysis for a position like this, and it took a very long time to analyze this to whatever depth is required by Fishnet. So, um, yeah, that aside, um, uh, I don't know that I have other issues to raise at this time. We have been having discussion about uh, Lee Chess in terms of a faster way to input moves. Um, and I'll leave it at that. I'm having that discussion with Lee Chess developers right now. We'll see what we mutually think of about that. Um, this is something embed library videos I eventually want to get to. Uh, as I have free time, my next ambition, well, let me take a look at other issues at this Twitch bot. Uh, is there something I can help with? Memory usage. Yeah, name. What is name here? Oh, yeah, this... I mentioned I'm calling this Wordsmith on my Twitch profile page. I hope it will catch on. Um, a shout-out command would be great. I need this. Um, 
when I'm watching some other person play uh, OMG words, I will spend some time thinking about this. Uh, and memory usage, likewise, I'll eventually get around to some of this stuff. Um, yeah, it'll be more fun to work on that as other people get me excited about it. Um, yeah, let's see. Oh, somebody created a voice-activated chess. I've not gotten that working in Edge yet, unfortunately. Um, somebody created a Dobotsu solver, which is delightful. Um, however, it's not. it doesn't have an open-source license. I'm not looking at it. Um, I implemented... Did I actually implement this? Yeah, I did. Reasons for declining challenges. It's now committed. Um, let's see, what's this? Engine timeout. Oh, yeah, that, that, we'll eventually get to that. It's not easy. Um, oh, I would very much like this issue. Hmm. I am sad, but yeah, perhaps as I work on that shout out command, I'll manage to get some more clout with the team and perhaps they will seriously consider my request. I am hopeful just to verify, uh, Woogles does not currently have a countdown clock mode, right? Like if I say, I'm going to play the computer, uh, we can choose to increment or max overtime. But there's not a third setting for Countdown or Byoyomi. Um, so, yeah, I would like this feature. I understand the team is very hard at work on very many features. Can't expect them to seriously take all of my requests. Um, I would like it. It's beginner-friendly. And time management is stressful, but perhaps after Blitz Champs, the round robin's complete, I can spend time looking at that. Live stream game view, I've made my thoughts known as we watch various people live stream. I'm trying to improve things, but it's painful. Um, yeah, Simul TV, cool idea. Conceal player ratings. Um, you know... Oh, I'm sorry, this is Lee Shogi, not uh, Lee Words. My mistake. Um, <laughs> distro Chess. Uh, yeah, they took two really fun ideas here. Tom7 did a lovely video on YouTube about esoteric AIs. Yeah, um, we'll leave it at that, but check that video out. Um, it, yeah, it's delightful. Promotion puzzles, allow PC. You know, they don't want my pull request there. Um, guess the move. Yeah, okay, and the, so there's older issues here. Just a lot of things. Uh, Pie chest variants didn't want my streamer layout, uh, or hasn't gotten to that yet. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun ideas, but nobody particularly wants to do my work for me or implement something that uh, just because I want it and that's fine it's just painful that most of the time that's the case but you know what can you do um yeah this is disappointing that the owner of chess cup doesn't want secure software well um I tried so yeah, I guess I can only get so excited about things being open source if I don't. <laughs> There's generally not a collaboration among open source developers, and Lee Chess is the exception rather than the rule. Um, yeah, and the offers out there, if somebody gets me a DGT board, I will spend some time on this. I'm not guaranteeing I can fix everything, but goodness, if I have a DGT board... I'm probably invested in trying to use it, right? You would think so? So the offer I'm making out there is like, somebody gets me one, I might 
try to figure it out, but uh, yeah, the original library developer that tried, well, I'm not the DGT library developer, but some other library developer that collaborated with Lee Chess is overwhelmed and unable to maintain um, what they produced uh, without being, because like, they're not an expert in Scala. I've spent some time studying Scala, so I could probably work on that better than they could, but we're not directly in contact. And I don't really care if it works or not until I get a DGT board. So that's just how it is. Um, let's see. User game download. You know, a lot of fun pull requests, and <laughs> this is one of the more fun things. Somebody created a horsey piece set. I've glanced at some of it. Um, so, yes. Uh, depending how invested I get in LBRY, I might consider implementing my own poll or issue for LBRY videos. Um, are there other things I can curate in the backlog here? I wonder. I don't think so. Oh, an API for user bookmarked games. That's a cool concept. Um, move prediction. Cool concept. Poor image quality of pieces in Puzzle Storm. Maybe I could curate this a little. Looking at the other things in the list on this page, I don't think there's much else I could help with. So let's take a quick look at this. Or image quality of some pieces in Peace Storm or Puzzle Storm. Uh, browser version? Firefox, Arch Linux. I'm not interested, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm out. I don't support Mozilla. It's not that I have anything against them, but um, it's just too much. All right. Um, I think that's other developers have or discussed this a little bit already, and they might be making progress on that. Maybe I don't recall. Um, prevent infinite team. What's the problem? Really? Are you? Hmm. I don't understand why you wouldn't just block the user in this case if they're being a dingo. But, okay, fine. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at discussions. I created a discussion here for third-party tournament manager. Um, so, yeah, if somebody... Actually, this is probably the highest priority thing out there. Is that not everybody wants to participate in team battle. Traditionally, in real life, there's been tournaments... Um, uh, such as the U.S. Amateur Midwest, the U.S. Amateur East, the U.S. Amateur West, etc., um, where they you've brought a team of four players with an alternate, and you go participate, um, and you play like five rounds over a weekend or two weekends or something. I forget two weekends, optionally with a fifth day, um, in the front, and um. Yeah, just traditional tournament management software could be used for that sort of thing. At some point, I'll do some searching to see if there's a tournament manager that could be readily adapted to integrate with LeechS, but I doubt it. Um, uh, preference to conceal ratings. Yeah, I th I like this idea. Eh, it hasn't gotten any traction. There's just a ton of things in the backlog, and improving performance is one of those. So if improving performance of the site takes a high priority for our lead developer, I can't really change his direction. Um, especially not just on my whim. All right, disallow draw for during opponent turn. I don't know if I recorded that in jest or... Yeah, I don't remember. I don't feel strongly about it today, but maybe yesterday or tomorrow I will. Maybe yesterday I did, maybe tomorrow I will, but today I don't feel too ambitious about it. Um, 
Better response in multi-move puzzles. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Um, you know? Oh! <laughs> I was just gonna say, you know what this site could use? Voting. Okay. You can actually vote on discussions. Or at least there's an upvote button. Spiffy. Tournament manager. Oh, you can see which ones I voted on. Okay. So things I submitted, it counts as me having voted on. Alright, so now I suddenly care about... Um, was this something I submitted because I cared about it? Or because somebody told me to submit it to the forum? Yeah, I think... Yeah, okay. So I only submitted this to the forum because somebody basically made me do it. So, down that. Uh, more categories of tactics trainer. Do, do, do. Lila discussions. I'm going to bump that. That should be at the top. Um, let's see. Visual glyphs and study mode. Um, better response. Preference to conceal ratings. Downloading puzzles v1. While hosting these, uh, oh, never mind. All right, I don't see a need to upload that. Does that actually manipulate the ordering of the list? Probably not. Um, are there other topics other than these? No, I think that's it. Can I sort these by vote count? Uh, top all. New. All right, well, apparently, hmm. Okay, well, I think I've done the best I can to curate the discussions list here. Um, yeah, uh, pull requests here are a bit much for me to tackle. The Most of these things are over my head. Um, is this something I know? Oh, Antma, that's the guy who submitted the Blossom algorithm for us, isn't it? He's like some super genius mathematician coder dude. I don't know. Uh, is this something I might even have any chance of understanding? Probably not. Incremental updates. Yeah, I don't know what this is, but chances are he knows what he's doing. Uh, discussion. He didn't discuss anything, but I honor his effort. It, kudos for maintaining something so thankless as the tournament manager. Oh, I apologize. Uh, I had shifted topics because um, I had actually, in under an hour, uh, sped up the anagrammer by 900%. Um, so like, if I said anagram AB, um, this would take half a second due to network latency and the other half a second because the anagram algorithm was slow. And so I fixed it by saying let's filter by word length before running the regular expression. And there you go. Yeah, the thing we were looking at earlier was uh, Scala, was Lee Chess code. So yeah, now I have the most performant anagrammer. So if I say I want to uh, anagram um, no, there you go. Instead of reading through or parsing, instead of comparing this regular expression uh n o and um against the alpha gram in each word um yeah now let me think about this for x and word length word list of lexicon x is a key in the dictionary the dictionary key and well, that could still be the word it doesn't have to be the alpha gram in fact, most of the time it should be the word, because there'll be other times you want to look up 
uh, you want to just iterate through the keys and see like which keys you can which keys match a pattern, start with a word or end with a word or that sort of thing. Um, uh, am I into programming? Sure, why not? Um, which languages? All of them. Um, no, all the popular ones. Uh, for the day job, they expect me to use Java, but Java sucks. But it gets the job done. <laughs> There's just a lot of other delightful languages to work with. Uh, be grateful. <laughs> it's easy to write applications in Java. It's difficult to write good applications in Java. Yeah. So if you end up living with Java, you'll have to live with it. Um, on the bright side, writing good Java is hard. Yeah, Python's good. Most languages have advantages and disadvantages. You can find... I'm trying to remember who's the... No, Brian Cantrell gave at least two presentations uh, where he talked about each language having uh, some set of properties that it's targeted for. Where, like, C and C++ performance and backward compatibility are way up there. Um, other languages might have other priorities. There's some languages where the priorities just uh, be able to write a program in the fewest possible characters. Um, yeah, it really depends what you're trying to do. But yeah, I'm impressed that I got this wordsmith thing um, implemented. I'm going to change my description of this. There we go. Website. <laughs> uh, anagrams. Sure. There we go. Save. Perfect. Um, yeah, so I think that breaks on the coding part of this session. Uh, it's impressive how easily I was able to get this installed with a little bit of help from other developers, but it was pretty easy to install. Just follow the directions. The setup guide was really useful. Um, you see here's a list of all the commands. There is no help command to tell people what the commands are. Um, wouldn't hurt to create one. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. There's nothing, I guess, preventing regex from being exploited, so be careful when you install this and make it publicly available. Uh, you're dealing with people who aren't going to come up with some creative way to exploit the bot. Um, but cool stuff. Oh! Oh, there's one other thing I could do, isn't there? No, actually I cannot. Um, I was going to comment that I could submit the bot to the top bots list on Discord bot list. Um, so we can find, like, there's some bots that'll serve Lee Chess services, and you could register, like, there's my Lee Chess stat bot, where people can just pull my bot to ask for their rating, to ask for recent games, for tournaments, etc. It's some extraordinarily dumb bot that, um, the, a developer by the name of Dora-Bell worked on. Um, and I took it and ran with it a little bit, um, made it really nice to use, hosted it on my cloud instance, which is driving 176 Discord servers. Oh, this is Discord. This is not Twitch. I don't know if there's a Twitch bot list. There probably should be somewhere, but, um, yeah, so potentially sometime this could be enhanced. Um... Yeah, this is still really cool, though. So thanks to Danny Barker for having produced this. Danny, Danny, I don't know how to say that. Um, could be Danib in the last name Arker. You never know. Actually, you do, because if you go to their profile, I think it says. I don't know. Actually, it doesn't. But yeah, thanks to them for producing this.